This is a painting of Frederick Baedeker. He was born in Witten in Germany in 1823. He had a tragedy in his first marriage. Three months after he was married, his wife died. Baedeker was a member of a well-known family. The Baedeker travel guides are used to this day throughout Europe. He was a traveler and in his travels came to England and there he fell in love with another young woman and married her. This was in 1859. He was a worldly man. He loved dancing, he loved music, and he and his wife enjoyed the pleasures of the world. But then Lord Radstock in 1866 had some gospel meetings in the city where Baedeker lived, and he was invited by a friend to come along. After the meeting, he felt very uncomfortable, and he was trying to work his way to the door when Lord Radstock saw him and came over and put his hand on his shoulder and said to him, My man, God has a message for you through me tonight. And the two of them went out and found a quiet space in the garden. And there Lord Radstock prayed for Frederick Baedeker and shared with him the gospel. Baedeker later wrote, I went in a proud German infidel. I came out a humble believing disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Soon his wife Harriet was also saved, and just as they had thrown themselves into the rounds of parties and concerts, they began to serve the Lord. He got involved in prison work in Finland and other countries, and then in 1875 he went with George Mueller to preach, first in Germany and then into Russia. Through Lord Radstock, who was basically a member of the same family of much royalty in Europe, he was able to preach in some of the palaces of the Russian upper classes. And he made contact with a good friend of the mother of the Tsar, Nicholas II at the time, and asked permission if he could get into the Russian prisons. And the director of prisons sent him a document essentially as an open sesame to all the prisons in Russia, 300 prisons in Siberia. So he began for 18 years, he traveled to these prisons on the islands on the north coast of Siberia. And the prisoners realized that only someone with the truth would make such a journey. He saw many of them saved. In one six-month period, it said that he visited more than 40,000 prisoners and handed out 12,000 copies of the Word of God. He represented the British and Foreign Bible Societies and traveled through that region, eventually crossing the whole country of Siberia from west to east. It's interesting that Alexander Solzhenitsyn, the well-known dissident and writer of our generation, was actually converted through the testimony of someone who had been converted under Frederick Baedeker. You may remember the story that Solzhenitsyn was ready to rush towards the barbed wire in order to be shot. He wanted to die, and he thought that would be a good way to end it. And as he prepared to run, this Christian saw him and saw the hopelessness in his face and went over and with his walking stick simply carved into the snow the sign of the cross. And that was enough to stop him in his mad plan to kill himself. And in speaking with this dear man, he heard the gospel and Alexander Solzhenitsyn put his trust in Christ. Now, uh, Leo Tolstoy, he knew Frederick Baedeker, and he wrote of Baedeker that, quote, he speaks in such a way that the most hardened criminals sink on their knees and repent. The last of his great novels, which was called Resurrection, is a work that actually describes 
Russian prison life. And it features two characters. One is known as Kesewetter and the other as the Englishman. The one is a German who preaches in English on salvation, quote, in the stately ballrooms and drawing rooms of the nobility in St. Petersburg. And the other, he says, is an amazing traveler who evangelizes in the loathsome cameras of the Siberian prisons. Now, this is actually two characters made up of one person, Frederick Bedeker. And he was both preaching to the upper classes in the ballrooms of St. Petersburg and also preaching in the prisons. Now, what a wonderful work this man did. Now, he was very sickly in his early years. He had tuberculosis. And yet when he got saved, he simply threw aside his medicines and said, Lord, I'm all yours. And he traveled across Siberia in the winter in this massive coat, sometimes on ox carts or in sleds, in equipment that probably wasn't much better than what the Apostle Paul used in his day. And Frederick Bedeker, only eternity will tell, the number of desperate souls were rescued from sin and from hell through the preaching of the gospel of this dear man. These vile prisoners, men who were desperate, men who were diseased, it was, it was worth his life to go into these prisons. But they called him Dedushka, which is dear grandfather. As they looked into the face of that man and saw the light of the knowledge of the glory of God shining from his face. How thankful we are for people like this. And I think of the words of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 6, a quotation from the 118th Psalm. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? God help us to discover that boldness of these believers and the boldness of faith that it takes to go out with the gospel like that. And may we pray for one another, as Paul said, pray for me that I might have boldness. May we pray for boldness and discover what it is to stand up for Jesus in a day like this.